Hello and welcome to the official Lost Podcast hosted by ABC.com. Well, as promised, we are back with another podcast before the launch of Season 4. And today we are joined by executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cues, And they have a special surprise or two for you guys to celebrate the anniversary of the crash of Flight 815. Here they are. Hello, Damon. Hi there, Carlton. Well, welcome to this very special surprise, unannounced, heretofore, never existed podcast. Is it? Is it? A, is that why you're wearing that party hat? Because it's a surprise podcast? <laughs> That's exactly it, Damon. Well, color me surprised. And uh, would you like to uh, tell everybody why we're having a special surprise podcast today? Well, because um, because Carlton uh, on uh, on September twenty uh, second, yes, September twenty second, uh, two thousand four, Oceanic eight fifteen um, crashed into areas unbeknownst uh, to the public at large, and uh, we are now celebrating that anniversary with a surprise podcast. The three year anniversary of the crash of Oceanic. 8.15. Wow, I can't believe that it, that they've been missing for three years already. And but, yet, on the island, it hasn't really been three years, has it? I mean, yeah, it's, break that down for me. How many days has the show actually uh, taken place over now? I think as of the end of the third season of the show, um, they had been on the island somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 days. Wow. So it, you know, it was like... It, so it's they, kind of coming up on Christmas on the island. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of like mid-December, and you wouldn't know it. No. But, uh, you know... No snow. Of course, the show itself spans a time period much more intensive than that because, you know, starting all the way back, um, I think the earliest flashback that we've shown so far is Ben being born, um, which probably happened in the uh, mid-1960s in uh, near outside Portland, Washington. And, and, the, uh, and the... I think it was Portland, Oregon. Oh, yes, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> It's it's right near Portland, Washington. <laughs> there is no temporal time shift of Portland into the state of Washington. Now, Don't now worry, you're, Oregonians. You are fully aware of my uh, knowledge of the forty-eight states. In any case, uh, this is why he's not on the Miss Teen America pageant. <laughs> I know, but in any case, and and we've gone to the future an undetermined uh, amount of years, but certainly right. beyond where uh, we've gone on sure. the island before. We don't know when that is. But sure, we much know, later. We know they have razor phones. Sure, in the future. Yes, much further. They have. We know they have razor phones and beards. That's pretty much exactly. all we've established. And those are two important things. But um, uh, so I think maybe we should try to do something exciting for the surprise podcast on the axis of surprise. The show people were obviously surprised by the finale, which is very exciting for us because it's so hard to keep secrets on the show. Um, but maybe um, other than the party hat that you're wearing and the and the miniature pony that you rode in on, which. I don't even know where you get those things. Um, I got it. I got it. I traded my banjo for it. <laughs> I think it's an improvement. <laughs> but um, I want my banjo back. But is the, there the pony? The pony is much higher maintenance. You could just call the pony banjo, and and that's it. And then I strangely, never had... my my banjo was named Pony. <laughs> that is. That is not so strange, oddly. Well, I think we also should just kind of break down what's going on. We are not actually sitting on the beach drinking Mai Tais. We are uh, busy in the Factory of Lost, uh, pounding out episodes here. Um, we're going to, I think, uh, for those of you who didn't hear our grand plan, we are, we're are we doing 16 episodes a season for the next three years, and then Lost will be over. And so we are busily at work on these 16 episodes that will comprise season four. And um, we're shooting them, and you know we don't know exactly when we're going back on the air, but uh, the best uh, estimate we have from ABC is in February, the night and time, you know, to be determined. Uh, but in I'm the mean- hoping for four o'clock, four, <laughs> four o'clock, o'clock on Fridays? Saturday afternoons. That's it's good. Nice that's that's going to be really popular before date night. Just sit down and watch. It's a good time slot. And then are you going out for like an early bird dinner? Uh, you know, hoping to get the special rate. Uh, you can get a surf and turf for four ninety nine. So you know that's how I roll. Exactly. You know, you and your uh, geriatric uh, home homies, right? You say geriatric like it's a dirty word, Carlton. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so, yes. yes. So the writers are all working incredibly hard. We're very excited about the scripts we've got. Uh, we've been back in production now since uh, since uh, the middle of August, roughly, and uh, all the actors are back on the island working. Very excited. We've got a couple new actors yes, we uh, do. working on the show. Uh, you know, some new characters to um, 
to sort of mix it up a little bit in season four should be fun. Exactly. So we thought today, and the reason that we are sounding perhaps a little bit different, is that we are in a radio booth at ABC with uh, our trusty producer, Chris. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to actually answer some questions, but we're going to do a little bit differently today. We're actually going to call some of our faithful podcast listeners and put them on the air with us and let them engage in uh, a little dialogue with us and ask them our, their questions directly. Now, of course, they have no... Um they have no advance warning that we're about to call them. They don't. Hopefully, they will remember their questions because they were submitted via this internet that I keep hearing so much about. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see if we can work out the technology and make some phone calls. See what we, see what we can do about it. Yeah, I, I think other than that, we're you know we're we're not going to say too much more about um, what's coming up on the show. I mean, we did go to Comic Con. We had an awesome time. For those of you who uh, didn't read about that, we we kind of confirmed that there will be flash forwards as well as flashbacks in the future of the show. And, and just regular flashes. And regular flashes. And, like and, a hot flash. Yeah, exactly. But the character <laughs> of the Flash right will not appear on the show. No, he already has appeared on the show. He was in the pilot when Walt is reading the comic book with the polar bear in it. Oh, yeah, that's true. So it looks not, like you just told a lie, Carlton. Well, well I meant like, okay. Moving you know forwards. What I meant. Congratulations. Semantically busted. There goes wow. the tenuous uh, trust, trust that we ha- have built up for so many seasons. So let's make some okay. phone calls. Chris, dial up our first right. lost listener. Hi, Daphne. Oh, my God. Hi, Daphne. Hi. How are you? How are you guys? This is unreal. By the way, you have the greatest name. Daphne. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and will you, you explain us- the origins? Um, well, the last name is my married name. Don't know where the origin is. Yeah. And um, my first name, thank my parents. I, I don't really know where the origin of my name is. I think Daphne is a Greek name. For you know some, what? For da- some it reason. is. You're right. It yeah. feels like it was like one of the uh, one of she the, was a goddess. The, I yeah, think one of the nymphs. Or you, and, and uh, you never asked your husband what the uh, origins of Kick Lighter were. No, because we got divorced so quickly after we were married. I didn't have time. No, oh, that's wow. a bummer. But, but look, at least you, at least you got a cool Thanks. name. Thanks. Let's go down that road, Damon. Thanks a lot. That's really nice. Well, you asked the question. <laughs> but uh, so basically, here's what's going on. We okay. are we are having a surprise um, podcast to commemorate the three year anniversary of the crash of Oceanic 815. Right. Crashed on September 22nd, 2004. Although the people on the island have only been there about a hundred days, we figured we would uh, answer some fan questions uh, in person and uh, going through the massive stack yours really jumped out at us and you probably don't have them in front of you but uh, even if off, off the top of your head you wanted to uh, to ask Carlton and I uh, you know she you, could be carrying them around you could have them no, in your I pocket think that one of the, fir- the first one I asked of course was about the dreaded triangle mm. um, it was about do you guys did you have you guys from the very beginning had a definite plan as to Sawyer or Jack as far as Kate goes or do you sort of listen to the audience and the internet, you know, polls and stuff like that. All right, or Daph- have you, huh? Well, Daphne, we have to out you. Are you a, a jader or are you a skater? I am a big time jader. Oh, wow. Uh-oh, is that bad? No, <laughs> it's wonderful. I mean, you know, I, I, we will we will say this. One of us is a skater and one of us is a jader, but we mm-hmm. will, but we will not reveal who is who. Okay. Um and and but but uh it's that actually, that doesn't we've both agreed on yeah. who she's ultimately going to end up with. Okay. Yeah. But that so, doesn't... yeah, good. I just wanted to know if, because, you know, all the stuff, I don't know if you know all the stuff that goes on on the internet and the skater and jader wars what, or whatever. What, what's the internet? <laughs> <laughs> we, um, uh, we, but believe it or not. We've been getting mail. It's we've been, been getting crazy. actual mail, letters, like, which no, I didn't even know No, have you been existed. getting, like, sewing kits? Yes. And skateboards? From, like, Brazil. No, oh, yeah. No skateboards. No I have skateboards. people send me emails asking me for money because they want to send you sewing kits and all sorts of you know, little things like that to, to, to let you know that the jaders are still here. Please know that it's certainly not a resolved situation by any means. Right. Uh, you know, there's, well, there's, there's, there's many more chapters uh, of this story to come. Between. Yeah, this is, while we're on the phone with Daphne, this is actually a good place to sort of officially confirm, you know, although we sort of mentioned it in passing at Comic-Con, that the, the flash forward that we see between Jack and Kate at the mm-hmm. end of the season three finale is not by any means the end of the show. Right. Um, it, 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 it does happen in the future um, when they get off the island, but mm-hmm. there, there is still a whole lot of story to tell beyond that. So although things look grim for them. Oh, um, so amazing. 
There's um, there's more to come. Oh, there is good. More to come. You guys, this is unreal. I am so like psyched that this that, you, that I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> it's uh, we're very psyched to be talking to you. Oh, yeah. sure you are. <laughs> so, so Daphne, what's your next question? Oh, my next question was as far as the fast forward goes that we saw at the end of season three. Is that a a definite occurrence that takes place, or is that something that is one possible future? that could very possibly be changed if Jack makes it back to the island to maybe be able to change whatever happened. You know, we're, we're not big fans of the idea of sort of multiple futures. Okay. And <laughs> I think that it kind of robs the story of its stakes in a certain way. So, you know, we, we're working very hard to kind of basically maintain the future is the future. And it's, right. it's not – we're not going to go back and sort of recast the future by – affecting events in the past and then all of a sudden having a completely different future. Okay. Yeah, you know, we're not saying that, you know, um, time and, and space time and the ability to sort of travel through time is not going to continue to be a motif on the show. Right. But sort of everything we have to say about, um, you know, uh, what the effects of time traveling are is, is in flashes before your eyes, you know, specifically right. in the scene between – Desmond and uh, Ms. Hawking, um, the rules that she basically explains to Desmond are the rules that we basically live by in the writer's room. Um, you know, I know there are other shows on the air that engage in time travel, whether they mm -hmm. be Daybreak I don't watch or, any other shows. Yeah, Journeyman or Heroes <laughs> or whatever. But, we, you know, basically the future is fixed. And, and, not, and not parallel future. That's right. It's, you know, Jack and Kate are going to get off the island. And, and he Jack is, is really that miserable. And he is going to gr <laughs> is gonna gonna grow a very... Large beard. And, oh no! Yeah, and, and, and buy a razor That's phone. That's fine with me. Yeah, all you those like, things are going to happen. You, you like you like Jack with the beard. I like Jack anyway. <laughs> oh good, excellent. Oh, Where are you, by the way, uh, Daphne? Where, where do I live? Yes, I live in Sarasota, Florida. Wow. Oh. Very nice. Yeah. Not knowing much about um, the geography of Florida, other than where Miami and West Palm Beach. I'm about I'd... four hours. I'm about four hours She's south. The... Of, uh, four hours north of Miami. And you're on the Gulf Coast. Yeah. yeah I've, been, how... I've actually been to Sarasota. How really? close? How yeah. close are you to Tallahassee? Oh gosh, I'm about maybe six hours. Good. Have yeah. you ever been there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? What do you think? <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't. Part I'm not. I was born here in Sarasota, so I'm not a big Florida lover. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> All right, Daphne. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. Have, Have a, a great day. day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Hello, Caleb. Hello, Mr. Tankersley. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm just great. How are you? Uh, we're excellent. We, uh, you know, we're, we're having a little bit of a surprise stealth uh, podcast today to uh, to commemorate the anniversary of the crash of Oceanic 815 on September 22nd this year. And uh, your your question sort of made the cut. Um, and uh, we were it's, hoping that you you would ask us it sounds, in it person. Sounds, it sounds very windy there, Caleb. Are you mountaineering right now? I, I'm outside. Yeah. Where 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 in the in the glorious world are you? I, I live in Missouri. Oh, excellent. Right on. Um, you know where Cape Girardeau is? Um, no. Who's Cape it's, Girardeau? It's, it's on the Mississippi. Oh, okay. It's St. Louis. Oh, excellent. Um, your second question involved, uh, in, in, involved Richard Alpert. Do you remember that one? I do. W would, would you be so kind as to ask us so that, so that we can snarkily respond? <laughs> well, I was simply wondering... Um, well, I was really fascinated with the character of Richard in the third season. You threw a lot of questions out there. And uh, now Nestor Carbonell is on Kane, which, you know, may or may not continue. But if it does, then that means you'll have a little bit of difficulty with filming, you know, and getting him there. So I was just wondering how that would work, or maybe, maybe Richard wasn't really all that important anyway. You know, uh, it, your your question basically, um, you know, uh, expresses a certain degree of uh, intelligence about the way that television is made that most people don't have. And that's why we we liked it because people are always wondering wh why so and so doesn't come back, or or you know, you make a, a deal with an actor, for example, Anna Lucia. You know, we made a deal um, with Michelle Rodriguez for one year, which really affected her storyline. Here's a case where you know we cast Nestor to play Richard Alpert. Um, he appeared in the first episode. You know, we we really loved him, wanted him to be sort of Ben's second in command. Um, started ramping up his storyline. Obviously, um, 
dropping several hints in Ben's flashback episode, um, a, a man behind the curtain about right. how long Alpert had been on the island and that Alpert, in fact, was not one of the uh, members of the Dharma Initiative but uh, predated them and is sort of an original other, as it were. Um, but around that time that we were uh, in production on that episode, Nestor went off to shoot uh, the pilot for Kane. Um, and mm. Carlton and I were like, well, you know, it's a pilot. You never know what's going to happen. But then you know. they cast Jimmy Smith in it. And <laughs> yeah. we're like, oh, oh wait a that's minute. not good. That's I've not heard good of at all. But um, at least they're not doing any promo for it. Oh, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I really haven't seen anything. No, oh, they really? actually <laughs> – we, We've been seen – maybe they're it's like, just because we're in L.A. But, you know, there are yeah. literally cane posters everywhere. Yeah. But, oh, really? But, but basically, you know, this this is what happens. You know, real life intervenes when you're doing television. And, um, you know, the same thing happened a little bit with Harold Perrineau. I mean, it was always our intention to bring him back. But we couldn't bring him back until – we could kind of work out a schedule, and he went off to do the sequel to 28 Days. 28 Days later, he was also in a pilot. His, fortunately, right. did not get picked up. So, you know, what we do in this sort of circumstance, we've got Nestor sort of parked, and, um, you know, we hope to get back to his character, but it's going to really depend on whether that show goes someplace or not. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, you know, we, we, have, some other, we have some other story plans, but we just, we're just going to – we've kind of – We've parked him until that situation gets resolved. You know, and the reality is, is you know, we have a little bit of a, of leeway on Kane, which is that it's produced by ABC Television Studios, um, even though it's on CBS. And hopefully, maybe that if we if we're going to use uh, Richard, you know, hopefully that will give us an opportunity to, um, you know, to. Uh, to get him out for an episode or to something. get him for an episode or two but obviously right. our, our plan for albert is a little more um extensive than that but as carlton yeah. said we just had to park it for now well i applaud your maneuvering so far <laughs> we will but, we will continue to the, maneuver the to the best of our ability do you who do you watch the show with, uh, with out there in missouri do you do you watch it with I friends have, or family or um i actually have a lost party every wednesday at my house awesome yeah well, it sounds like we picked the right person to call then. <laughs> right. Well, well Caleb, right. thanks for talking to us today, and thanks for oh, watching thank the so show. Much. We really appreciate your patience yeah. and your fandom, and uh, we really hope you uh, you like season four um, and like hearing yourself on the podcast, which we, should be uh, available within the next week or so. Cool. I'm excited. I'm excited for February. I us can't too. wait. All right, All right man. man. Take see, care. See you Saturdays right. at four. Bye. <laughs> Hey, Ryan. This is uh, Carlton and Damon. Welcome to the official Lost podcast. We read your questions. We thought they were great, and we wanted to uh, ask you to ask us those questions live for our podcast. We are, uh, we are doing a stealth uh, surprise podcast to commemorate the third year anniversary of uh, the crash of Oceanic 815, and uh, you had asked us sort of three fascinating questions that we felt uh, – you know, were were legitimate and deserve to be answered uh, in person or at or, least over or, the phone. Or we could be evasive about them quite effectively. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so why don't you why don't you fire off question number one? Uh, question number one was: Is is Nikki and Paula was that story really dead, or or is there more to that we didn't see? They are buried alive, Ryan. They are dead. Um, you know, <laughs> it was one of those cases where I think you know it's like you go to the store and you buy three things for dinner when you're really hungry and then you get home and you eat one and you go, geez, uh, what about the other two? I mean, we <laughs> those should... other two things were Nikki and Paolo, <laughs> respectively. <laughs> pretty much sums it up. Uh, you know, we had sort of uh, bigger plans for what we're going to do with them, but then, you know, we got into the season last year and we just really found that we were neglecting our regular characters and we heard a lot about how we were neglecting our regular characters and then we were like, uh-oh, I, we just don't think we can – be taking time away from Claire and Hurley and Sawyer and Jin and Son to be doing Nikki right. and Paolo stories. So we took their entire sort of arc and we kind of compressed it into that one episode. Now, I'd like to ask you, Ryan, were you were you a fan? Did, you know, people sort of break down kind of like some people love that episode, other people really didn't like it, and just kind of want to know where you weigh in on that one. The, the one Nikki where they episode. the one where they bought the farm expose. I I I, I like I liked it. I, I liked the story as you were getting into it in season two. It was just like new people that were that were there on the island, but we didn't hear anybody. Sort of like an extra coming to the forefront, right? And and I, I was glad to see they have their own episode. And then it just kind of shocked me they died in the, in their one and only episode that they were featured. It was just like I didn't quite understand it, you know. 
Well, what we, one of the things that we found happening was, you know, aside from what Carlton said, you know, this kind of started with exactly what you just said, which is people were very curious about who the other the castaways that we never heard from, the ones who are out there with Bernard, you know, uh, making the mm-hmm. SOS sign. So we basically came up with this idea for Nikki and Paolo and sort of had a cool arc for them. But the moment that we introduced them, um, you know, the, the fan community and audience at large basically cried foul. So we began to come up with, you know, an alternate plan to basically cram all the story we'd come up with them and deal and, and deal with it and resolve it in a in a faster and more timely manner. Uh, and by alternate plan, he means backpedaling. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're not too proud of ourselves to know when, you know, when something that we tried didn't work exactly. But and, we love the episode. We actually yeah. thought it ended up really – we were very proud of it, and we thought it was a cool episode with a, with a neat twist and as sort of a s- standalone. It was a, just – it was a fun story exercise for us to actually pull that one off. And the worst thing we could have done was nothing, which is they, they just melt back into the chorus. At least right. we basically put them front and center and, and, and told their tale. So anyway, Ryan, we have a, you have a couple more questions here. But first, I want to ask, what do you uh, what what do you do uh, for a living, Ryan? I'm an office manager for a hurricane shutter company. Oh wow, oh, cool. Are there there? Yeah. I assume that's a that's a pretty good business in West Palm Beach. So you get like, oh yeah, you get like psyched when you you know see those Category Four storms coming. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> not, op- not coming directly our way. We we like good scares, you know. It's an opportunity though for for a good. Oh scares. yeah. Excellent. I think we definitely need some hurricane storm shutters on the lost office uh, windows. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Now, question number two. Uh, I'll give you a hint if you don't remember. It had to do with a certain character being pregnant. Um, yep. And it wasn't Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was I was curious. Uh, are we going to find out uh, relatively early, um, hopefully in season four, that is, is Kate going to be pregnant with, with Sawyer's baby? You will, you know, you definitely will find out if she's pregnant uh, with Sawyer's baby in in sort of the first run of episodes. We don't want to be specific, but I I'd say probably, right. you know, if we if we premiere it in the first week of February as we're expecting, you would probably have the answer to that question by you know the Ides of March. That's pretty specific, cool. Damon. Well, it's not that. I mean, it could, you, <laughs> you know, yeah. So like, um, we won't be specific, but in episode but, four, you'll know. No, but you could get it in the first episode. I'm just. I'm not I'm saying just, it's episode four. I'm it just casting a much three. wider net. <laughs> or two. If Carlton were to say it was episode four, I would not disagree. <laughs> but I'm not going to confirm that it's episode four. Okay, third question, it, it, Ryan. You probably it, remember that. You, By the you way, you must remember this one. Is I think it's the one with uh, Mikhail. That's yeah. right. Yes. Is, is, we can find if he's still alive or. Or what's what's his deal? The idea of a grenade going off at close range, one would think he's finally dead. Um, I I don't like your tone, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, what what are you implying? Well, <laughs> well, yeah, you have him. You have him. Everybody believed that he died with a, with an arrow in his heart or the sonic fence, and he keeps popping up, and it's just it's just odd. That's all. Have you ever known any Russians, Ryan? Do you know how tough Russians I, are? They build those guys to last. <laughs> I have not. We don't have too many Russians here in West Palm. You, what's shocking is you don't even know how he lost his eye. If you if you had heard that story, you'd you'd really think we were bogus. I mean, the man. Now, Mikhail's dead. He is, but of course, you know, in Lost, being dead does not mean you don't work on the show. I mean, look at Christian Shepherd. That dude's done ten episodes and he's been dead. Oh yeah, that's right. So you know, we might be seeing some more of Mikhail in the past, but. You know, as we've been, as we've long uh, prided ourselves on, when you die on the island, you're dead for good um, until the zombie until season. the zombie season, which unfortunately it's we're never going to do now because the show has to end in the, at the end of the sixth year. Oh, like so you're disappointed. You'll just have to you'll just have to imagine the zombie season. Nikki and Paolo and and Mikhail all frolicking. So, were you were you pleased with the end of the uh, of of the season to see that Jack and Kate were certainly on the outs with each other? I I was I mean I'm I've, I've been a big Juliet fan when she when she uh, started on the uh, on season uh, three, and I, I kind of like her getting together with with Jack even though she's kind of still uh, mysterious you know. Yeah no we uh, we're big Juliet fans ourselves. Who, who do you watch the show with Ryan? Uh pretty much just by myself because <laughs> I I was in it uh, from very early on and my wife just never got into it. It's, and it's kind of hard to jump in the middle, you know what I mean? That's for sure. Is she like, oh, why are you still watching that show? You better be careful. <laughs> Look, da- Damon wants to call her and give him a piece of his mind, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, so wh- one last question for you. Who do you think is in the coffin? Uh, I think it's 
I don't know. I think I think it might be Locke just because of the that tiff they had at the end of season three. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's a good guess. Although the guy just won an Emmy, so I don't know. <laughs> it's actually Frogert, who is who is the new sock we're introducing this year. Uh, and wait, till, if you like Nicky and Paolo, wait till you get a load of his story. Well, Ryan, we'll let we'll let you get back to work there. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us today. And thanks hey, for watching the talk. show. We really appreciate it. All right, man. Nope. Bye. Have Bye. a good one. Well, what did you think about uh, calling viewers live, Damon? Did you think that was good? I uh, I thought it was awesome to sort of reach out, and everybody seemed really excited. And uh, you know, we're still five months away from the premiere of the show, so we're, we're hoping four. To, we're hoping to do this on video at some point. Um, but uh, Chris is working on the technology for that. Uh, and uh, we hope that'll be happening as we begin doing our weekly podcasts and season four gets ready to start. And but you'll be able to wear your new hat. Exactly. And play the banjo live. Very exciting. I can't wait to see that. I really You'll really have to wear your pants, can't. though. I think we need to – what we're going to do, we are, we are now vowing to you in this – we're going to come up with some new – good new inside jokes <laughs> yeah, for season four. Yeah, those are the ones are done. I feel – that's you know, it. The last you're going to hear of them is on I the feel that I day. feel the banjo and the pants wearing has gone the way of the tail section. <laughs> it, it is. It is time They're to done. move on okay. and uh, and come up with some good good new gags. People might not like them, but they'll be new. But at least they'll be new. Like new Coke. Yeah, exactly. I like new Coke. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks, Damon. I'll see you soon. I'll, I, I guess I'll be talking to you in about five months or, or oh, four no, minutes, no. whichever way you, whichever way you want to look. Anyway, at. thanks for uh, thanks for hanging in there during this uh, down period, and uh, we will be back to you guys shortly. Happy anniversary, Oceanic Eight Fifteen.